Hey everybody, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and in today's lesson, I just want to do a quick overview of all the things you should focus on when you're first getting started playing guitar. Now this is an overview, so I'm not going to take the time to break things down or else this would be like a three hour long lesson, but I have broken everything down in other tutorials and I've made a playlist. So there's a playlist of all the stuff we go over in this video, you'll see that down below. And I also have my free ebook, which is like a written copy of all these things. So you can check that out, it's completely free. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Anyways, when I have a brand new student come in to take lessons with me, I have three clear goals. The first one is for them to learn how to read all the stuff that they need to know how to read. And it's not gonna be sheet music or any of that. It's just a chord symbol, which is literally a picture of the fretboard and it's a chord chart which is a chord symbol and some rhythm slashes to tell you how many times to strum each chord really straightforward stuff nothing complicated here that's the first goal i have the second goal is to train up their chord hand to be able to switch between two chords and to give them my method that helps you learn to gradually switch cleaner and more accurately. The final thing is we figure out a strumming pattern and we figure out the mechanics of strumming, which once again, your arm just goes down and up and we just make contact with the strings sometimes. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I always wanna keep everything really simple because I want my student to get a taste of everything so they can put it all together and actually use that to play a song. And oftentimes, more often than not, my students are able to play through a simple two chord song on their very first lesson. And speaking of two chord songs, that is totally the way to go when you're just getting started, because that way you can just practice going back and forth between those two chords. You can focus on all those other musical things like strumming, counting, playing through the whole song. You know, so I have a, um, I collect two chord songs. I spend a lot of time doing this. I have a whole bunch. I have a book on my Patreon full of them, and I'll put a list of them down below. Anyways, we're going to get started with our chord symbol and chord chart. Now the chord symbol, is just a picture of the fretboard. You can see right here, you have six vertical lines. Each one of those corresponds to a string. On the left, that's the thickest string. And on the right, that's the thinnest string. And when you kind of look down at your guitar like that, that's kind of what it looks like. Now the horizontal lines, like you can see there's kind of boxes. Those are the frets, you know? So the first box, that's the first fret, second fret, third fret. And all you gotta do is look at the dots and then you just put your fingers on those dots. There's a little more to it, but if you go left to right, that's my biggest tip. Go left to right and just kind of follow it. So in this case, we want to make an E chord. On the left, there's nothing on that string. The next string, oh, we have a dot at the second fret. Then on the next one, we have a dot right there, and we have one right there. And if you look underneath, it says the finger numbers. And like I said before, if you look down below, there's a playlist full of all this stuff if you need to go more in depth on this. Otherwise, we're gonna move on and take a look at our chord chart. Now, when you're looking up songs online, one of the best resources is you just type the name of the song and then you type chords and lyrics or lyrics and chords. And you'll get a sheet that kind of looks like this. It's just some words with the chord symbols over top. Now, the one thing that these sheets are lacking is they don't tell you how long to play each chord for. You know, sometimes you play a chord for four beats, sometimes it's eight beats, sometimes it's half a measure, and we're lacking that information in these. Now, I recommend learning how to read a chord chart for two reasons. One, you can acquire chord charts and read them straight up, and you'll know how many beats, everything is, is there. They have all the information a player needs. And the second thing is that it actually kind of teaches you how to assemble a song in your head. Even if you don't plan on reading chord charts necessarily, that is how you should picture tunes and how you can keep track of stuff in your head. So it's really good that way. Um, as far as reading the thing, really straightforward. You see here we have, this is called a system. It's, it's basically like a line or a row, right? And we're gonna chop our system up into four measures. And then within each measure, there's four beats. So in this top line here, we would count up to four, four times. The reason why we divide things into measures is because it would get crazy. In a longer song, you know, you'd tell the bass player, hey man, when we hit beat 274, change to a G. You know, that just sounds crazy, right? Instead, it would be like, hey man, when we get to the chorus, in the third measure, it's G. And that makes way more sense to people. You know, as humans, we like to make things more modular and break them down that way, right? So we group things generally into four that means we keep counting up to four over and over. One, two, three, four. One, 
two, three, four. And we just follow our chord chart like that. Now I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like to play along with this chord chart. I don't expect you to do this with me, I just want you to observe. Uh, you see there at the top we have E, two measures, and then we have two measures of A. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then we switch to A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's all there is to it. That's all the theory that we need to know up front. How to read a chord symbol, how to read a chord chart. And we could go more in depth on those. Uh, I do in the playlist down below, but really that's all you need to know at this point. The next thing we gotta do is train up our chord hand. Um, to start, you should learn two chord shapes. Pick a song. Um, I have a list down below. Uh, there's a bunch of songs that use E and A in that list, so might as well start there. We have our E chord, and if you need help making these shapes, I have gone over this a million times and I have a really great lesson down below. But long story short, that's our E chord, and we're actually gonna make A sus two, which requires us to take these two fingers and just move them that way, and that's it. And I want you to learn how to strum each one four times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Four, and just switching without pausing. Now usually, I don't think I've ever seen a student just get it like that right away. We have to build up into that. And I have a thing called the chord switching game. It's my method for whether it's a super complicated chord or the most basic chord shapes. It's a universal method that you can use to integrate new chord shapes into your playing. We basically start off with our first chord. We strum it on beat one. One, switch, switch, switch. One, switch, switch, back. So you can see I'm strumming on beat one, and then on beats two, three, and four, I have all that time to switch. So we're still keeping our time going. We're still counting one, two, three, four constantly without pausing, keeping a steady beat, but we have lots of time to switch. And I go over that with these two chord shapes in a separate video once again. You know, like if I were to do this all in this video, this thing would be like three hours long, right? So forgive me if this is going a bit quick and if you're, you know, but check out that playlist below and it'll definitely teach you all this stuff in much more thorough fashion. Anyways, that's how I want you to practice integrating chord shapes. You just downstrokes only and just go through it to get the switches nice and clear. So knowing what to do with our chord hand is actually quite simple. You know, you learn where to put your fingers to make one chord shape, and then you move it to a different shape. You know, this hand does barely anything. It's just kind of holding shapes and, and changing every once in a while. The actual playing of the guitar, that happens with your other hand, with your strumming hand. And strumming can be a, a pain point for a lot of people, but if you remember these key things, I think it'll be a little bit simpler. Let's start off by just lightly touching the strings, just to mute our strings, so we get that sound. First thing you need to realize is that your arm is in constant motion. It's constantly going down and up as you count. It goes down on the numbers and up on the ands. So one and, two and, three and, four and. And I want you to learn how to go like this and then count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then I want you to count just the numbers. One, two, three, four. So in that way, you're kind of counting each one of these as a down up. Down up, that's one, two, three, four. But you gotta do it steadily. One, two, three, one and two and three and four. And that's the biggest thing. Once you get this and once you're comfortable with this, the rest of strumming is just missing the strings sometimes. See how my arm's still moving? Just watch my elbow. No matter what pattern I do, it's doing the exact same thing. My arm's constantly going down and up. That's like a built-in metronome and you need to learn how to do that because guitar is a rhythm instrument. You have to have that rhythm down. You know, that's the, the biggest thing on guitar. A lot of people get caught on the chord shapes and 
what they're doing is they're letting their chord shapes interrupt their strumming. You know, they focus so hard on switching that they kind of pause the strumming. Don't let that happen to you. Right off the bat, use the chord switching game to practice your chords and then kind of ignore them and focus 100% on strumming when you're practicing strumming. To start you off, I recommend learning a simple strumming pattern like down, 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 up, down, up. We can break it down. Beat one and two are just down strokes. One, two, and then beat three and four. Each of those is a down up. Three, four, and just one, two, three, four. One, two, three. If it's not happening, I have another lesson where I go over this. Once again, you know, I've gone over all this in depth, so please check that out. But um, that's where I recommend you get started is just getting that down. Now, when it comes to putting it all together, you have to get to the point where you can switch your chord somewhat comfortably. So you want to be able to go one, two, three, four, one, two, and just go between them like that. And then it's just a matter of changing up your strumming pattern a little bit. You know, we're already moving our arm down and up. Just one, two, down, up, down, up, one, two, down, up, down, up. And that step, every student's different. Some people get it pretty much right away. Some people, it takes them a few weeks of practice before they're able to hit that point. And it doesn't matter because once you are able to do it, whether you're able to do it the same day or whether it takes you a month to get it, once you are able to do that, at that point, it's just a matter of learning more chord shapes, slowly integrating them into your playing. So if you already know the E chord and the A chord, add the B7 chord to it, and then you have three chords, and you can play three chord songs with those, you know, and then maybe learn the G chord and go between G and A or whatever, right? Let the songs that you're learning dictate what chords you learn. And, you know, just keep it simple. Pick two and three chord songs. I I have a, a bunch of methods for this. You know, I, I spend a lot of time thinking of like how to, how to make it so that anybody can learn guitar. So please check out my resources down below for that. But at this point, the biggest thing is to isolate this hand and just practice this hand by itself. You know, just practice your chord shapes and then to isolate your strumming by just muting the strings and then just practice strumming and try to put it together. And then you go back to isolating them and then you go back to putting them together and you're gonna keep doing that over and over again. And eventually you'll be able to learn songs much quicker. You'll be able to integrate things into your playing much faster. And if you'd like a step-by-step guided path through this whole thing, I have a complete beginner's course. There's a link to that down below. Um, in it, we basically learn how to play guitar from the ground up and get to the point where you can play through the most common chord progressions using the most common strumming patterns. You know, you'll have the ability to play through tens of thousands of songs. And along the way, we do use songs to help reinforce our learning. So um, please check that out if you'd like an easier path through all this, or at least like some guidance through it. Either way, whatever you do, as long as you enjoy music, as long as you like listening to music, and you take at least 15 minutes a day to practice, you're guaranteed to keep getting better. Anyways, have a fun time practicing, and I'll see you soon.